know what I know A child, a child Shivers in the cold Let us bring him silver and gold Let us bring him silver and gold Said the king to people everywhere Listen to what I say Pray for peace, people everywhere Listen to what I say The child, the child Sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. And now we'll have Kyle, and he's playing End of the Beginning. Hello? Oh, just wondering if Logan is in here? Logan? Oh, Logan, good. I didn't see you guys. So, Logan is going to sing Away in a Manger. Do you want to hold the microphone? Yeah. This, this microphone, okay, ready? You want to come here? Okay, ready? How? Uh, it's, it's, it's on. Yeah. Oh, we're done? Okay, He's changed his mind. <laughs> Thank you, Logan. <laughs> and next we have Ashton playing Frosty the Snowman.
And next we have Oliver, and he's going to play the 12 Days of Christmas. And we are encouraged to sing along to the 12 Days of Christmas. Is that Mike's song? Is this Mike on? Kim, is that Mike on? We had a capo emergency here before we, so Donald helped us out. Otherwise, this wouldn't happen.
Good evening. Merry Christmas. Joy and Noel, Mele Kaliki Maka, and all of that. I understand we were a tiny bit premature in ringing the bell. And we have one more, is that correct? So I think we can indulge one more musical act. Thank you. <clears throat> I welcome you all here this evening. Uh, we have gathered to sing and to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And it is wonderful to see so many people here, uh, many faces that I recognize, but also many faces that I do not. And please know that you are all very welcome. We are glad that everyone is here. Because we have many visitors, I'm going to make the little announcement that I don't usually make on Sunday mornings, but... I know will be appreciated. Can you take a moment to check your phone and make sure it's off? It's just always embarrassing if you happen to be the person who thinks yours is off, and then you discover that it isn't because right in the middle of a prayer, it goes off. Okay. I'm Donald Schmidt. I'm part of the ministry team here at First United. Uh, our other, um, the other half of the ministry team, Cheryl Perry, is currently on a beach in Mexico with her family, but I do know that there is a part of Cheryl that probably wishes she were here as well, as this is a very important um, service for her. Also um, helping to lead worship this evening, Francis Chase on our Minister of Music, Jessica Crawford on the piano, and thank you to all of the many musicians who provided that wonderful prelude. Just in terms of announcements, uh, there is another service here this evening at 11 p.m., and there will be worship here next Sunday. The church office is closed this week. Should anyone have an emergency, however, please phone and leave a message. We will be monitoring the uh, voicemail daily. That's all I have for announcements, so let us continue our worship. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us take a moment to share peace with those around us.
Join me in the responses that will appear on the screens in bold. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who lived in darkness and despair, God's new light is shining. For God has given us great joy, a harvest of good news. It's as if a great burden has been lifted from us. He shall be known as the Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father. He will rule with justice and righteousness. His realm is one of peace. God has done this out of love for us and all people. Christ is born. Come, let us worship God. Our opening hymn is in Voices United, number 60, O Come All Ye Faithful. The first three verses, the lyrics will also be on the screens. This is the last time this year we will light the Advent candles. For four, for four weeks, The candles have been burning as we thought about hope, peace, joy, and love. These are the gifts which Jesus brought us that first Christmas long ago and offers us today. The waiting is over and Jesus is born. 
Each week, another candle glowed and our wreath shone more light, brightly. Tonight, we light our white candle, the candle which represents Jesus. It is at the center of our wreath, just as Jesus is the center of our lives. Happy birthday, Jesus. Let us join in prayer. God, our hearts sing with joy and praise because of Jesus. At this happy season, we rejoice that Jesus came among us. By his birth and life, he has shown us that we are your people and that we are greatly loved. Help us to remember Christmas all year long by giving to others the gifts of life, hope, peace, joy, love, kindness, and understanding. Amen. I invite you to stand. If you are able, let us sing together hymn number 38, Angels We Have Heard on High. Again, the words will be on the screens. Please be seated. (laughs) 
A big part of the focus of this worship service is that we celebrate this together all ages. And so at this time, if there are children who would like to come up and join me, um, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to read a story, then we're going to hear the children's choir, and we're going to go look at the nativity scenes and have another story. So if you'd like to join me, you're welcome to. If not, that's okay as well. And it's kind of a tight squeeze, and we're just going to squeeze in. Oh, thank you for the capo. So I want to read this evening the Bible story about Christmas, but I'm not actually reading it from the Bible. I'm reading it from this wonderful storybook I have that tells Bible stories in a way that makes them a little easier to understand. So I wanted to share the story that way with everyone this evening. There's, for this story, there's only one picture, so I'll show you the picture now. You kind of know, I'm guessing, what the picture is anyway. We have a man there. What's the man's name? Anybody know? Joseph. Joseph. Your guys are good. How about the woman? Mary. Mary. And there is a baby. Anybody know the baby's name? Jesus. You guys are good. Okay. Let's hear the story. Joseph did not know what to do. He wanted to trust Mary, but her story just seemed so far-fetched. She had a strange visitor? She was going to have a baby before the wedding? Imagine all the gossip. But what if he refused to marry her? What would happen to Mary then? Poor Joseph couldn't sleep for worry. One night, after tossing and turning for hours, he dreamed that a messenger from God came to him and said, Joseph, don't be afraid. You can trust Mary. It's God who has breathed this new life into her. She will have a son, and you will call him Jesus, which means the one who saves. And after that, Joseph went back to sleep. When he got up in the morning, he knew what to do. So when Joseph told Mary about the dream, she was so happy, she cried. But then another piece of news brought tears of a different sort. The emperor in Rome wanted to count all the people in the empire so he would know how much money he could collect in taxes. Bethlehem, wailed Mary. Why do we have to go all the way to Bethlehem? Because the emperor wants everyone to go back to the home that their families came from, Joseph explained. My family is related to the family of King David, and he came from Bethlehem, so that is where I have to go. Joseph was worried too, though, because the baby was going to come any day now. But there was nothing he could do. Late one night, after a long journey on foot and by donkey, Mary and Joseph reached Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread, but they did not have a house of bread. Hungry and tired, they searched for a place to stay, but they found only a cave where animals were kept. Mary was scared. This was not what she had expected. She had imagined that her baby would be born at home with family around, but home was far away. Joseph was scared too. He had no idea how to help Mary. When some women showed up with a lamp and water and clean cloths because they'd heard there was a baby on the way, Joseph nearly cried with relief. After many hours, the baby was born and Mary cuddled him and rested while the women made the cave clean and cozy. There were some shepherds who came breathless from running, words tumbling out of their mouths. Good news! Guess what? The sky is full of angels and they're singing and they told us all about a savior. And they stood back, afraid to come too close. And soon they were gone, rushing out to tell everybody what they had seen and heard. What had they seen? A newborn baby, God's Savior, a light in the darkness for everybody. That's the story that we celebrate tonight. That in the strangest of places, God came and baby Jesus was born. Now the children's choir are going to sing, so we've got to kind of move out of the way a little bit, I think. Francis, you can tell us exactly where you need us to move, and we'll move. Okay. 
you can stay up here. Let's be extra quiet to hear them sing, okay? Thank you. It was wonderful. Now, we're going to carefully walk over here to where we have all of our nativity scenes. So come on over, but remember, we're not going to touch these because some of them could fall over and things like that. But come and gather around. And look at all of our wonderful nativity scenes. Lots of different people have brought these in over the last several weeks. And they're all kind of neat. And even though they're all really different, like we've got this one, right, that's wool wrapped around the figures, and that one's carved out of wood, and that one's made out of paper, and different kinds of ceramics and things, they all tell the same story. Now, usually when we come over here, we, put, we usually just have one nativity scene and we put baby Jesus in the manger. Tonight, we're going to put two baby Jesuses in because two of these mangers, the baby Jesus comes out, most of them he doesn't. So we're going to put baby Jesus in this one and we'll put baby Jesus in this one. And we'll notice all of these wonderful nativity scenes. And whenever we see one, we can remember this amazing story. So we'll have another story in just a moment, but we're going to sing a hymn right now. If you guys want to stay there, you can. The words are going to be up there. Um, and we're going to sing Away in a Manger. I'll invite the congregation to remain seated, I think, be a little less chaotic.
So I want to share a story, and because when you're sharing a good story, it's good to see the pictures. So fortunately, the pictures are going to show up on the screen, so everybody can see and enjoy the pictures. On a snowy Christmas Eve, a young man made his way along a dark, deserted cobblestone street. His name was Thomas, and he was wrapped in a woolen cloak, had a knapsack flung across his back, and in his hand he hung a tin candle lantern. Behind the lantern's glass panes sat the remains of a spent candle. When he saw the glow of candlelight through a shop window, the village candle makers, he hurried his steps and turned into the snow-covered pathway. And in Thomas's way stood a beggar, shaking his cup for coins. Thomas pushed him aside impatiently and opened the door to the shop. Inside the shop, metal pots filled with tallow and beeswax hung from a stone hearth. The old candle maker stood with his sculptor's tools in his hands, surrounded by the beautiful creations he had made out of wax. I'm lucky to find you here, Thomas said. The town is empty. The old man gazed silently at Thomas as the young man glanced about at the rows of sculpted candles. There were sprites and fairies and angels with see-through wings and fragile princesses in gowns as delicate as lace. They smelled of myrrh and frankincense and meadow flowers. You're a foolish old man, Thomas said. You spent hours making beautiful things, and they devour themselves. How long before the flame melts an angel into an ugly clump of wax? He pointed to a row of simpler candles. All I need is a light. I'll take one of those. The candle maker looked steadily at Thomas. Christmas candles are of no good to you. Thomas was kind of startled by the stern response, but he laughed. It would do me much good not to stumble in the dark. Are you playing me, old man? I will not pay more for your candle than it is worth. It's only four cents, the man said. But you may find it very costly. The old man's words were strangely serious. I have money. Give me the candle, Thomas shouted. It's late and my family's waiting for me. I need a light to find my way. If it is illumination you want, the candle maker asked, that is what you will get. He took a candle and he dipped it over a flame and placed it inside the lantern's tin frame. Thomas dropped some coins on the counter and walked out the door. The old man said in an amused smile, Merry Christmas, my brother. That kind of surprised Thomas. To you as well, he stammered, and then he stepped out into the dark, the lantern lightning the, lighting the road ahead. He'd only gone a short distance when a shadow emerged from an alley. A robber, he thought fearfully, and he held out his lantern. Who's there? And in the light of the candle, he saw it was only a frail woman huddled against the cold. Sir, she cried, do you have a few pennies for me? His eyes narrowed in contempt, and as he looked at her more closely, he gasped. He knew the face well. It was his own mother. Mother, is, is this a joke? Why, why are you greeting me like a beggar? And the woman stared at him. Just a few cents, sir. Why are you here, he asked. Where are my brothers and my sisters? And he reached out to her, but she pulled away. Mother, you act so strangely. You'll catch a cold. Here, take my cloak. And he removed it and held it out to her. And cautiously the woman came forward and snatched the cloak away from him. But as she moved from the lantern's light, her appearance changed. She wasn't his mother. She was a beggar. She disappeared into the darkness with Thomas's cloak. That was a strange trick, he thought. Now I'm going to catch a cold. Thomas walked on, quickening his pace against the air. And as he passed beneath the awning of a darkened inn, the candle revealed another form lying in the gutter. He held out the candle and gasped. Ellen, my brother, are you sick? He set the lantern down and pulled his brother's limp arm around his shoulders, struggling to lift him. Ellen, I can't carry you. He knocked on the inn's door, which was opened by a grim-faced woman. 
My brother is sick and I fear he's going to freeze before I can come for him. Can I bring him inside? For the price of a night, the woman said. Thomas reached into his pocket and gave her the money he had. She scowled. Wait, I I have more, he said. Here's my knapsack. Take it. The innkeeper looked at the bundle of clothes and she reached out a hand. Thomas flung his knapsack from his back and handed it to her with the last of his money. Bring him in, she said. He left the lantern on the curb and dragged the man in. So it's your brother who lay in the gutter, she said. Thomas looked at him. He's he's not my brother. You're crazy, the woman said. Thomas ran outside. He grabbed the lantern. There is something strange about this candle's light, he said. He had just glimpsed the bright lights of home when he came across a little girl shivering in the cold. Have you anything to eat, sir? she asked. He felt a stirring in his chest. This child was so tiny, no bigger than his sister. But he pulled the lantern away. He was not going to shine it in her face. He could guess its trick. And what could he do for this poor child? He had no food or money. I have nothing, he said. And he went home, penniless and cold. His own home was dressed up for Christmas and music and laughter came from inside. And as he entered, his mother greeted him. Thomas, you've arrived. And hearing her cry, his sister and brothers rushed into the room to welcome him. Thomas, where's your cloak? Yes, said his brother. And, and, and where's your knapsack? I, I gave everything away, he said. To whom, his mother asked. Oh. He looked at the candle in his lantern. The old man spoke the truth, didn't he? You are costly indeed, but you are worth so much. What old man, his sister asked. A wise man who makes candles. And just then he knew what to do. He turned to the door. Thomas, where are you going, his sister asked. I must see about someone else. And as he left the warm, fragrant house for the cold night, his heart was warm with joy. For that Christmas Eve, he'd learned a new lesson. If we will see things as they truly are, Thomas learned, we will find that everyone, big and small, belong to one family. And this truth, known from the beginning of time, is perhaps soon seen best in the joyous light of Christmas. So Thomas learned a wonderful story that night that we really are one family and we need to take care of each other. Our families at home and other people that we meet. We're all God's children. We're all one family. So you can go back to the people you came with and we're going to sing Silent Night.
Please be seated. In a moment, we will celebrate all of the many gifts that God gives to us. This is the time to celebrate our offering. A couple of notes for those who may be new or visiting with us. We don't pass an offering plate here. Um, And that's for a couple of reasons. But one of them on a night like this is we do not want to give the impression that we're simply trying to get a crowd here to get your money. It's very important for you to know that you are our guests, and we are simply glad you are here to celebrate with us this evening. Having said that, if anyone wishes to make an offering, there are boxes, one at the back and one over there, and um, at this time or at the end of the service, you are welcome, if you wish, to put a gift in there. That money goes to support the many ministries of this church, and it is all welcome, but please know that you are our guests. At this time then, as we listen to this music, let us give thanks to God for all that God has given to us.
Please pray with me, I think. No. I'm mistaken. Please be seated. (laughs) It is called Force of Habit on Sundays. We do that this evening. We are going to have um, a prayer of dedication and intercession. Will you bow your heads and join me in prayer? Loving God, we give you thanks for all the many gifts that you give to us, for the ongoing gift of your presence and your love in a world that is so in need of hearing the message of your love for all people. Your unconditional everlasting love can change our world if we will let it. We pray this night that we may find ways to share the message of your love with others. And so, one word at a time, one smile at a time, one hug at a time, one simple act of justice at a time, we might make our world a better place. We pray for all of those who are in difficulty this night, those facing uncertainty, those who are overwhelmed by any number of things. May they feel your presence. May they feel your love. May they know that they are your children. And all this we pray in Jesus' name, and we pray together the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Joy to the World. It is in Voices United 59. The words will be on the screens. Please stand if you are able. Friends, you have chosen a wonderful way to begin celebrating Christmas by gathering with friends and worshiping God. But I would ask you to go from this place now and commit yourself to celebrating Christmas, not just tonight, not just tomorrow, not even just this week. Each and every day, our world needs to hear 
the message that came that night so long ago, that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, God loves you. Share that message every way that you can and know that God, Creator, Christ, and Spirit will always be with you. Amen.